morning. It's Thursday, the 9th of November 2017. Welcome, boys and girls, to this. Welcome to Television Centre in Bracknell for this morning's United Kingdom talk coming to you live at uh, slightly ahead of schedule, incidentally. We're two minutes ahead of schedule. I told you 10 past 10. It's only eight minutes, but it's all forward today. And first of all, congratulations to Diane for being the first message in this morning. Good morning, Diane. Followed very closely on that's on Facebook by the YouTuber Ross. Good morning, Ross. Was it you who mentioned that there was a wrong date this week? I think it was on, now which show would it have been? Was it Was it the show with the camera up my nose? Was that the one? I think that was the one, which were, which is on the uh, uh, YouTube. I think I had the October instead of November. And this person said, this person said, I think it might have been you, Ross, or someone else, or Brendan Brady fan. And uh, they mentioned this. And they said, I know you don't like it when, uh, when when we correct you. Well, I do, actually. That That's, that's incorrect. Ah, ah. Uh, uh, two incorrects there, two incorrects. Uh, no, if you see something wrong, please tell me. You know, because sometimes I don't know. Look at the sound issue we had this week. There I am sitting here. We've rolled the music. We've rolled the opening things. I've sat here for five minutes talking away, only to look at my screen and realise that no one can hear me. Because <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> and with the date that was mentioned, um, that was the incorrect date, I don't know. Now, I don't, I don't know if I can go back on that. Once it's gone up, I don't think you can edit it on there. So you either leave it as it is or you redo the thing and re-upload it. The trouble is then it's out of place. So it might go, you know, 5th of November, 6th of November, 2nd of November, 7th. And oh, oh, I don't suppose that even matters. No one's even going to notice that. I was talking actually to Ray Reynolds last night at the quiz. Uh, what has Ray got? I've got something to tell you in a minute. Mike, I couldn't believe it. What Ray's got, and he didn't even refer to it. I'll come to that in a minute. I'll come to that in a minute. But Ray, I was saying to Ray Reynolds um, last night, I've got this new iPhone 8, <clears throat> which I, I was pretty confident would improve the, the picture quality uh, that we do from downstairs. Uh, was it uh, Brendan Brady fan who mentioned it yesterday? Thank you, Ross. <clears throat> uh, the, it would improve the picture quality we do downstairs because that's just straight onto a phone and it's made no difference at all. And he said, well, it looks all right to me. And I think it's one of those things that people won't notice. It's only the person doing it that notices. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure you do the same yourself. Um, I don't know, do some sort of whatever flower arranging. And you, you stand back and look at your flowers and you think, oh, that's not very good. And yet everyone says, oh, what a beautiful load of flowers. Oh, oh, really? You know, <laughs> it's it's something you don't notice. It's similar in my garden, actually. Sometimes I look at my garden, I think, oh, it don't look a bit untidy. I don't like the look of that. And then someone will say, when I put a photo up there, you've got a beautiful garden. And, you know, it's often someone out of the box that's got to tell you. All right. Uh, good morning to Mark Jones. Morning, Mark. Uh, Adam the Plumber's there. Ants Galloway from Bungle, Zippy and George from Rainbow. Up above the streets and houses, rainbow flood. Would you like a rainbow in the background there? That might be quite good. <clears throat> I don't know. A rainbow behind me there. Uh, Ray Reynolds is indeed with us this morning. Good morning, Ray. I'm going to show you something in a moment again. OK. Uh, Latawan, good morning to you. Lantawan, I think that's how I say your name. Welcome along to the show. Whereabouts are you, Lantawan? Uh, Wendy Young's there. Good morning, Wendy. She's on the Slimming World at the moment. Uh, she has maintained this week, so it hasn't gone up. So that deserves a round of applause. Congratulations and celebrations. Oh, Cliff Richard. Oh, I never went to his flat, you know. Uh, Rod Brown. Good morning, Rod. Kim Witt up there in Lincolnshire. Good morning, Kim. Ah, uh, oh, one of Mark Weller. You see Mark Weller there? That's who I used to sit next to in uh, secondary school. London Oratory School. We used to sit there in geography, didn't we? You, me and David Reddington. What happened to him? <laughs> David Reddington, we'd sit there in geography and just muck about the old time. Possibly why I got unclassified for geography in my O-levels. Young people are watching at the moment, Mark. Oh, what's an O-level? What's an O-level? I'm really offended by that. <laughs> we used to be at school. We weren't offended by anything. Not even when the teacher threw the blackboard rubber at us. Nothing offended us. We just got on with it. You know, 
I'd like to welcome you to this morning's geography question. Geography. Oh, we're really offended by geography, miss. We're really offended by your hair, miss. We're really offended by your dress, miss. We're really offended by your shoes, miss. <laughs> Is that what it's like in school now? Ghastly people, dear. Why would anyone ever want to become a teacher? Good morning to Admig. Good morning to you, Mer Harbour. Where are you, sir? He's on the periscope there. Joey Millen's there. Let's see. Uh, uh, Ashley there. Good morning, Ashley. Welcome along, sir. Uh, Nathan Vaporboy Edwards. Them blackboard rubbers hurt. They certainly did, especially if they caught you on the side of the eye. Oh, my word. Blackboard rubbers. Again, if you're young, you won't know what this is. It's, it, was, it was a wooden thing. Wooden, OK? About that size. Do you like this? This is my bit. It's a what? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It goes like that. Not like that. Like that. No, it isn't. Oh, I mean, this time in the morning, please. This is a Beats Peel speaker. It was a gift from my mate, actually, some years ago. And it connects up to the phone. It's quite loud. But that's about the size of a blackboard rubber. And that would be all wooden there. And there would be a felt bit at the front and they'd clean the blackboard with it. <clears throat> Simple as that. What do you mean no computer screens? No, we didn't have a computer in the school. There were no computers. End of story. Computers didn't exist at all. That was it. Blackboard. And now and again, you'd annoy the maths teacher. Now, what was his name? Nice bloke. Really, really nice bloke. But some of the uh, naughty... I wasn't a naughty person at school. Not at all. I wasn't a naughty person at school. I used to speak at... I got the cane twice, I think. I got the cane, which was a very pleasurable experience, I have to say. Uh, I got the cane twice. And, um... Uh, but I wasn't a naughty person at school. Now and again, if you had a nice teacher, the naughty boys would muck them about. And we had this... The mass teacher was a lovely bloke. And he got really annoyed once and he threw the blackboard rubber, just missing this boy by about an inch. <laughs> oh, we're young. We don't know what inches are. Well, look it up, dear. Oh, we're offended by that. Good. Be offended. Be offended. <laughs> Nasty blackboard rubbers. Yes. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look there. One moment, please. Where are we? Where were we now? Uh, yes, so Nathan says left a hell of a mess. Yes, it did. Those blackboard rubbers, the chalk would be all over the place. Just just powdered chalk everywhere. And um, actually, you know, the teacher would never hit anyone with the blackboard rubber. He was a blooming good shot. But it would end up embedded in the wall at the back of the class. Well, not quite embedded, but there would be a mark in the wall, you know, like a dent in the wall. <laughs> Imagine the council people coming round, wouldn't you? You know, to check their score. Oh, they come around with their clipboards, don't they? Eyes, <coughs> glasses on the end of the... Oh, hello, we're, we're from the council. We're very important people, very important people. You voted us in. We're very, very important, yes. Oh, there's a mark there. Oh, we're going to have to deal with that, aren't we? Yes, we'll have to put up the council tax, £200 per household to fix that small dent. And while we're at it, we'll give ourselves a rise of 25%. Ghastly people who work in councils, dear. We don't like people who think they're important. We don't, lovey. They're just normal people like the rest of us. They are. Poor Ashley's not well today. Yes, I thought you might be coming down with something, Ashley, to be honest. <clears throat> you haven't seen me yourself for the last few days, dear. You haven't. Uh, good morning to Merlin. Been on the move since six o'clock this morning. Have you? What, you've been on that, um, uh, <laughs> what's it called now? Oh, what's it called? The stuff you take... Laxatives. Do you mean you've been taking laxatives and you're in and out of the toilet this morning? <laughs> Paul Mosley. Good morning, Paul. Says, why were supply teachers so useless? They absolutely were. You're correct. Ding! They would come in. Right. And they'd, they'd come in and they'd sit there. Supply teachers. We actually had very, very few supply teachers, Paul. Very, very few. There were no teacher trading days where everyone would get a day off. Nothing like that. Oh, the sun's come out there. The summer come out tomorrow. Look at that. The sun's out. Look. The sun. No, that one. No, 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 no. I haven't gone yet. The sun. The sun has come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow 
you'll be gone. How pretty, isn't the sun's out there like that? Yes, yeah, supply teachers, I've heard, are very useless. We now and again, we might have a temporary teacher in when someone's sick or something like that. But they would come in and they wouldn't have a clue what to do. They wouldn't have a clue. They'd come in <clears throat> and they'd sit down at the desk. Right, right, can I borrow your book over there, please? And someone would lend them the book. And then they'd quickly flick through the book. Right, how far did you get? <laughs> and of course, we'd just lie. We didn't want to do any work. We just lie. You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh, God. So true. So true. Uh, let's have a look. Merlin's trying to get to London, are you? London. Since six o'clock this morning. Are you there yet? You could have walked there by now, love. The Southern Rail strike is off at last. How long's that been going on for? About four years? Ridiculous. Hopefully they'll they find something else to strike about. I don't know what it is with the blooming union at Southern Rail. They just like to have time off all the time. I think that's what it is. Um... Nim numbers in my days, and I never beat the rubbers. What was that? Over ten years. Uh, did you ever play truant, Chris? For games, yes, only for games, and I used to do it every week. I hated games. There were four of us actually. We hated games, and um, it wasn't until the sixth form, or the fifth form, one of the two. No, sixth form, I think. And literally, <coughs> uh, now we had to be clever with this. We worked out how to do it. There was um, a register that was taken at every single class to make sure everyone was there. So when you moved rooms from one room to another, when when the when the when the bleeper went off, beep 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 beep, everyone got up and moved to the next room for the next class. The whole thing only took a few minutes. I don't know how we managed to do it actually. The whole school, every time the bleeper went off, beep beep, and there were five, six beeps, beep 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 beep. Now and again, there was an extra half a beep. Beep, beep, like that. Like there was something wrong with the machine, which was all... I always found that very exciting. The highlight of my day at school was the beeps going off. Beep, 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 which happened seven times. How many periods did we have? One, two, three. I can't remember now. But it happened several times a day, these beeps going off. And at that moment, everyone packed up and moved on to the next room. And the entire school of nearly a thousand pupils, I went to the London Oratory School in uh, Fulham, the entire school would move around in the space of three or four minutes. How the hell did we do that? I don't know. <clears throat> and we moved to the next room. We weren't allowed in the room. OK, until the teacher got there. So there would be this, these queues in the corridor. The, it was like a square thing, our school, right? Like a, like a big square in the middle. And you come out the room, move along to the next room, wherever you were going, or upstairs to science and music, or downstairs to geography, PE. We had our own swimming pool, woodwork, metal work. That was all downstairs. Where was the art room? Art room, I think, was upstairs. I hated art. I hated art. Couldn't do it. Couldn't, couldn't draw, useless at drawing or anything like that. Uh, and then once a week, of course, we went swimming and once a week we went to games. I hated games, <clears throat> absolutely hated it. In the sixth form, we worked out because they take a register at the beginning of every single class. If we and, and on the very first time you do that particular class, they, they'd be making up the register to see who was there. Now, with the games, the same thing happened. They had the register. But if you didn't go to the very first one, you wouldn't be on that register, you see. So we worked that out. So the very first games, we hid. We hid in the, in the library, I think it was. What are you boys doing in here? Oh, we've got a, a free period today. OK, boys, carry on. Keep quiet, please. It's a very strict school. Uh, so we hid in the library. So that was the first time. And then <clears throat> when everyone left on the coach, we literally walked out the door and we walked past the office of the headmaster. Four of us walking past, you know, at a time that wasn't playtime. And we kept that up for the whole term, the whole year. And no one ever questioned it. And we were really surprised that we, we've got to get caught this week. <laughs> and from there, of course, we couldn't go home. It wasn't like now where the parents don't care. You know, you arrive home. Why are you home? Oh, we got an early start. Oh, OK, then. No, it, there was no early finish. 
There was no holidays because someone wants to go and uh, uh, teach some teacher something. It ju That just never happened. So you couldn't go home. My mum and dad would have gone mad, particularly my dad. What are you doing at home so early from school? I'm going to ring up the school. It'd be a bit like that. You'd be in serious trouble. No. So from there, we got our train back to Putney Bridge Station and it was a calf there. And I can compare the calf exactly to the one they use in The Apprentice when they've lost a task. You know that calf they go to? Bridge calf. It was just like that. And we'd go in there and have a cup of tea and something to eat. Even though we'd just had lunch at school, we'd have a cake or something like that. And then we'd hang around there till a little bit probably before we, sh be we should go. And then we'd just go home. So, yes, I did. I didn't play truant with classes at all. I don't think I ever missed a single lesson class because I was playing truant. But no. Did you play truant, Wendy? Yes, she, it looks like she did. Yes. Oh, truant. Dear, dear me. Uh, good morning to DJ NYAMA Food Entertainer. Today, Chris, not tomorrow. The sun will come out. Today, I see what you mean. Bet your bottom dollar that today we'll be friends. Friends, friends. That's what it's all about, OK? Poor old Ashley's got a cold at the moment. Train drivers get a 28% pay rise. I heard that on the radio. 28% pay rise. They're not on crap money, these train drivers, you know. Have you seen what they do? Have you seen what a train driver does? They get in their little cab. They've always got this little bag over there, uh, uh, like a camp bag. I think they're all gay. I think all train drivers must be gay because they've got this little camp bag and they waddle along, don't they, darling? They waddle along uh, and then they open their little door, close the door, and then they just push the sandal down and the train moves forward. That's it. Thousands of pounds a year for doing that. It's outrageous. It really is. They don't even even have to clean their own windscreen. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, but we've got we got extra money because it it's very stressful when someone jumps in front of the train. Why is that stressful? They wanted to do it. Not your fault. They wanted to to jump in front of the front train and kill themselves. How is that your fault? What could you have done to stop that train? Nothing. They wanted to die. That's it. Get on with it. Get off the train. Move the body out of the way and carry on, dear. <laughs> I'm such a compassionate person this morning. I really am. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, good oak. Um, <clears throat> Wendy says, we used to have a one-way system at our school along the corridors. As indeed did we. As indeed did we. Mark, yes, indeed, games is exactly the same as PE. No, games... Games and PE, oh, it's, ah, actually, it's three things I didn't like. Swimming, PE, and games. PE was in the um, in the big hall, you know, with that dreadful horse thing that you have to jump over. Oh, how much did we eat that? You know, and dangerous for the boy. Well, we, we, we was a boy's school. Very dangerous if you got stuck on top. You might land on your little bits and pieces. Mightn't you? Ghastly tear. Awful. Games was when we all got on the coach and went to the playing fields to play rugby. We were a rugby school. Never played football. Only rugby. In the summer, tennis. I was useless at all of it. Except in the fifth year, was some, somehow I, 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 I got into the rugby and, I, and, and no one could get past me. I was, a, I was a fullback. No one could get past Chris. Oh, Chris look at Chris Reardon. What's happened to him? And I started running with the ball. <laughs> no one came to grab me because they thought... That can't be Chris, because the rest, of, you know, the, the first four years, I just hung around the side of the pitch. Didn't want to get involved, you know, just walked around the side, trying not to be noticed. And then in the fifth year, suddenly I got into it. And, I, and one day, I, I, so, I, I think the ball just ended up at my feet. I grabbed it and run for hell. And I scored a try. Yeah. Suddenly you're all popular, aren't you? You know, how strange is that? Strange and mysterious. DJ says uh, the train drivers are spoiled. I know for sure and there is a station there like at home. I'm sure they are, yeah. Look how much train drivers get. 50 to 63,000 pounds a year, says Ants. Gosh. Helena. Good, I'm glad you're there, Helena, because we're going to do something now. Helena says, by the way, you went to a very posh school, the London Oratory. I wouldn't say it was posh. It was Catholic. I don't, I don't think it was posh, really. It was very, very strict. Very, very strict indeed. Right. Oh, is that where you go, Helena? That's where I go, that one. Royal Free. I go to the Royal Free Hospital. 
Yes, that's the one I go to. OK, now, I just wanted to read this out. This is someone's post, OK, uh, that they put on there. Indeed, uh, the young lady, she works, she works on the NHS. And uh, I want to know your thoughts on this, please, this morning. And you will be able to call in. We'll open a phone line there. Please wait until I've told you what to call in about, OK, my darlings, or suggested what to call in about. Helena there posted this week this. Now, you and I constantly see the cut and paste brigade. I call them the cut and paste brigade, where they cut bits, of, you know, just, just take the, like, chain letters, like chain letters. Now, I've already had three this morning. Um, one which was uh, the first Christmas tree of the year. Please pass it on. One was the snowball fight. I've hit you with a snowball. Please pass it on. And one was, uh, this is for my friends. Please send to three more friends, including me, if you really love our friendship. I don't reply to any of them or send any of them. On. I think they're a complete and utter waste of time. I really do. But on a more serious side are the people that cut and paste charity stuff <clears throat> or awareness stuff. Now, I wonder how much this actually does. Are you like me that sees a post like if you know someone that suffers dementia and then you don't read anymore, you just move on to the next thing? Are you like me? Am I being a little uncompassionate or incom... Well, I don't know what the word is. Incompassionate on that? Perhaps. But Helena, come out with a very good thing. This is what I think it's all about, a lot of it. And Helena says, as someone who has worked in cancer and end-of-life care, I refuse to share paste or whatever in honour of cancer sufferers or the people I know who have had it. And we, we all know people who have had cancer, possibly some people who have died from cancer, that sort of thing. We all know. We all know. We don't need a cut and paste to tell us, you know, that people are dying all the time from this stuff. Helena says, if you really want to help, fundraise, donate, volunteer or campaign for the NHS services, supporting Macmillan or do something practical. Otherwise, it's just supporting online stupidity, massaging one's own ego and not helping anyone at all in reality. And, and I think she's got a really good point here. A really good point. And I've always thought that. I've always thought that, oh, oh, who's cutting and pasting this now? You know, it's nothing to do with that. If you've lost someone recently, possibly, who's died from cancer, feel free to put a photo up there. You know, this is so-and-so. I miss them very much. And, you know, you look at that. OK. But ge the general cut and paste things, you know, where it, it, it's... It's almost like people are just sitting there at the computer looking for... Oh, oh, that's something to do. Look, cut, cut, cut. I bet they don't even refer back to it. I bet they don't even refer back to their thing that they've cut and pasted, whether it's cancer, dementia, blindness, deafness, one leg fallen off, whatever it is. We want to arrange, uh, 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 announce this, you know. Um, Amil says, I hate those pastes. Almost make me feel like a bad person for not sharing. Well, yes, it does. And if that's if you read them. You see, I don't read them anymore. The moment I say, if you know someone, I, I move on to the next one. So I don't know what you think about that. If you want to call in about that, feel free to do so. You may feel the opposite. Just because I bring something up doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. You know? But call in if you want to. 0208 3477 if you want to talk about that. Or put a message on here. I'll read it out. Or if you've got Skype, we have a Skype as well. Our Skype in username is United Kingdom Talk. So Skype in United Kingdom Talk or call in 020 3477 is our local London number. OK, so have a little think about that. Just a second. I've done, I might have done something wrong here. Oh, what have I done now? Do, 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 do. One moment, please. Retrying to connect you. <clears throat> Done something wrong now. Ah, uh, gosh. Is it that one? No, nope, it's not that one. 
Oh, hang on. Is it Wendy? No, that's just going round and round now. Can't get that back. Are we still on air? <laughs> Click that. No. I'm having, I'm having a bit of difficulty here this morning. Oh, dear, dear me. Hang on. Let's try that way. Let's try it that way and see how we do. Good. So, do you... Oh, hang on. We might get that now. Do you cut and paste those things at all? Or do you do the same as like me and just move completely on straight away? I mean, I, I, I just don't get it why people do that all the time. I find it most annoying anyway. All right, so that's the cut and paste story there. I, I, I've lost your messages for the moment. Um... <clears throat> Desperately trying to get these back here. Strange. Uh, oh dear. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe if I close it. Hang on. Let me just close this down and reopen it and see what happens. That may help with our slight technical difficulties here in our live television transmission to the world. One moment, please. I think, uh, oh, one, two, three, four. Hmm. Now, at the moment, now you see, I've got the train driver's message as the last one that's come in there. Oh, that's what happens there. I'll be with you in a second, gang. Let me just try and sort this, or I can't, or we can't, uh, just can't, uh, you'll just be listening to me chatting away instead, wouldn't you? No, nope. it's not coming through. Hmm. Now, I'm not sure if it's even still working now. Can someone try a private message? <clears throat> Would someone mind trying to send me a private message and then I'll know whether it's happening or not? I have a feeling we might have stopped. For some reason, you send me a private message, then I can carry on. But I can't get to your messages at the moment. You can, of course, call in 0208144377 if you want to call in. But at the moment, oh, hang on. We got a private one there. That is still working. OK, Wendy. Well, that's still working. I can't get back to the list. You know, the list of messages that are coming up while the show's um, happening there. So, uh, OK, well, I'll, I shall carry on and hopefully come back to your messages in a moment. We'll try that again in a moment, OK? Uh, yesterday, going to work, t another two hours to get to work, unfortunately, yesterday, for the Quiz of the Week. Our weekly quiz at the King's Head Theatre Bar, which isn't on next week, OK? The quiz isn't on next week, and um, that's because I'm on a day out. I'm on a night out next week. I'm going to the... BBC Radio London Soul Night Out with Tony Blackburn. That's next Wednesday, so there won't be a quiz next Wednesday. Uh, good morning, Adam. Good morning, Chris. Yes, you're live on all parameters and all transmitters across the UK and the world. Uh, and throughout outer space, interstellar space as well? Of course, yes. <clears throat> that Not is excellent. That. that is what I like to hear. That is what I like to hear. Well, thank you very much, Adam. Um, I don't know why I can't get them back now. <clears throat> oh. I'll tell you what might work. If someone can like, can someone like the the video and then mm -hmm. I might be able to get them back. If So if someone likes it, that's unless, if you've liked it already, I don't think you can do it again. But if you like the video, that will, that might work. Actually, I might be able to get that back then. But uh, yes, I, I, I kind of clicked something and then I lost it. Thank you, Ross. How are you, um, <laughs> Uh, Adam, can I just take you back to that little cut and paste thing we were talking about? How do you yes, feel about that? Um, I, I'm, I'm exactly the same as you. I cannot stand it. I've had people with cancer. I've had people with this. I've lost people to that. I was bullied at school. You get all the, if you were bullied, and um, please share and paste this. To, <clears> you know, and it, it doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't make, in fact, it, 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 I think personally, it um it heightens the um the problem. It doesn't. It, all, all you're doing is sharing rubbish around. That's that's exactly what I think. I think most people actually think the same as us. I know Helena, as I say, she works on the NHS there, and um, mm. she's very annoyed by the whole thing. It's a little bit like um, you often see people. You know when you get various awards coming up, and they're on mm -hmm. there. 
begging for votes. Well, I'm sorry, you know, but nothing nothing makes me less likely to vote for you if you keep begging me for votes. And it's yeah. kind of on those same lines. And that there's no, you know, if someone was, to, if you was to go on there and say, you know, um, really sorry to tell you, da -da -da has died this week. He or she had cancer, um, mm -hmm. and um, and told us a little bit of story. And then, you know, if you want to, please donate to this cancer appeal. Then I might be interested in reading that. That's personal. It's personal, yeah. isn't it? But to just mm -hmm. cut and paste stuff like that, it's kind of lazy and it's it, to me, it just comes across as someone who wants to paste something up there and doesn't know what to paste. Thank you, Ross. Doesn't know what to paste up there. So they've just, yeah. uh, something's come in. Oh, there's something for me to cut and paste. Someone will take cut notice of what I've posted. It's a bit like that, yeah? Yeah, oh, most definitely. I mean, as I say, <clears> you know, with the bullying, I mean, I was bullied as a child at school. Right. And every time I see a bullying post, it brings so back the memories. Posted, yeah. Which I don't really, which I don't, you know, I'd rather put to the back of my mind. Yes, yes. Um, so there's that, for instance. It's like, um, I'm not being horrible or anything. It's at Christmas, especially, you get all these adverts on the television for um, crisis here and crisis there. And I think it was this time, last, you know, Christmas last year, they were literally bombarding the set. And in the end, I just ended up switching the TV off every time the adverts came on. Yeah. Yeah, they overdo it, don't they? They just overdo it. They mm. just completely... I mean, yes, it's very sad that these things are happening, cancer's happening, um, there's poverty in the world, there's this happening, there's that happening. Um, and you just get absolutely bombarded with it, especially at Christmas, because everybody's feeling it's that special time of the year when everybody should be good to one another. Yeah. And, you know, just slightly diverting off of that, it's like Christmas to me now... It's so commercialised. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's like, um, as you just mentioned, somebody's just sent the first Christmas tree. It's November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to the 12 days before and the oh, 12 days after? Oh, don't. We used to get so excited before Christmas. And uh, I remember when I was a little boy, the Christmas mm. tree wouldn't go up until the day before Christmas. Literally, Christmas Eve, we'd be putting that Christmas tree up. I can guarantee you my sister will have hers out in the, in the end of November. And then there's nothing yeah. on the day, you see. This is the thing. You, you've missed... They missed the point. They missed mm -hmm. the point that on Christmas Day, you come down, wow, look at that tree. Well, you can't do that now because it's already yeah. been four weeks and they're already sick of looking at the damn thing. Yeah, exactly. Just I mean, not... For, I mean, I... Not I for me to criticise how other people do their Christmases, you know, but it's mm. just not for me. Christmas should be a, a thing like that, and, and you see it. But going back to those adverts and that on the telly, there's, yep. there's several adverts I keep hearing going around on LBC all the time. And sometimes you hear the same advert in one break. You know, at the yeah. beginning, other adverts, and the same advert appears again at the And it just completely turns you off. I'm talking about charity adverts and things like that. Good morning, Luke. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and that's, it. that's it. That's another thing. The amount of money they are spending on these charity adverts is yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the, the amount of money that, that's why I don't give to a lot of these big charities because half of it ends up on advertisement. Yes, and the other half ends up on directors sitting in some office. I yeah. mean, you take the charity that I support that you've mentioned before, UK Homes for Heroes. Every single penny raised by that charity goes back into that charity. They do not take one single penny for themselves or anything. And they what, are, what do they do, know, Adam? It's uh, UK Homes for Heroes. Um, it's run by Michelle and Jimmy um, and their band of volunteers. And they basically rehome the homeless uh, soldiers and personnel on the streets of the UK. So, for for instance, they've just invested four thousand um, pounds raised by the charity to uh, to build this unit that is able to go out on the road and give the homeless and the, the homeless ex personnel shower, shave, and a sit down and a chat. So they can go there, get a fresh set of clothes, have a shower, have a shave, and uh, sit down and sort of uh, talk talk their problems over. Yeah, that's excellent, isn't it? We've got someone here, uh, Danny says, Homes for Heroes is a great charity. It certainly is. Yeah. yeah it's ho UK Homes for Heroes Pride and Passion. Not to be confused with the one where you see the uh, the two men carrying the stretcher. That's, uh, I think that's 
Oh, uh, that's a different home, thing, home, is it? Yeah, this is UK Homes for Heroes. And what's the other one? Um, Pride and Passion. Um, and they've basically got outreach. They do outreach every Wednesday and every Sunday at Waterloo Station. Right. Um, so they get a lot of ex You know, and if they find an ex-homeless service personnel, which they often do, they will do their best to get them homed. Um, so there was a chap just recently. They He'd been on the street for 15 years, I think, after Afghanistan, had PTSD and all the rest of it. They've helped him. They've rehabilitated him. And, and now he helps the charity in return. And he's got a job and he's back, the... you know, he's sort of half living a, a normal life. You know, you know, you never probably will return to a fully normal life of PTSD, but no. it can certainly be managed and helped. Some of them have got sort of that blast. Um, what do you call it? Yeah. Um, not oh, not fire, physically fire. blast where they do. It does something to their head, doesn't it? But it, it just yeah. amazes me how ex-army, navy, whatever type of people are not looked after by this country after oh, serving them. It just don't make sense, does I, it? It's, it, mean, it the according yeah, to the God. television, you know, some stories on the television, it's completely the opposite in America, you know. It doesn't matter what's mm. happened to you. You're looked after if you've been in the services. I don't understand why that doesn't happen here properly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's just like recently, you know, they were absolutely bombarded by phone calls from their gut, from their gut, lads and lasses on the street yes. on fireworks night, on fireworks night because of the because of the big you know the big explosions and the bangs. Right. It's taken back to taken it back to when they them, were doesn't it? It out must there. it must do something to their poor heads um, if you've it been does. in some sort of terrible explosion or or been attacked by you know mm. an opposing force or something like that. It must do something to your head if you've just escaped with your life uh i can understand the whole fireworks thing they hear the fireworks going off and i suppose it takes them mm. back we often see that on the films don't we in the in the in the yeah. war films where someone's had something happen to them and then it goes back to them years later and then every time they hear a bit of noise they're kind of taken back to that point at which um they had so much trouble there Mm. Yeah. So Home for Heroes, uh, excellent, excellent charity. Yeah, UK Homes for Heroes. And what, what I'll end up on saying, Chris, is don't waste your time posting, you know, if you've been affected by this, if you've been affected by that, you know, cut and paste. Go out, go out there and do something positive. Go and support a charity. Go and help them with their outreach. Go and do, you know, give them, give them a donation of cash, food. You know, if you see a homeless person on the street, don't give them money, give them some food. Yeah, I've done that before. I've done that before. Yeah. Mind you, I, I, I have to say, and that I, not, obviously not everyone on the street is um, has been like one of the Home for Heroes people. No, no. Um, no, no but nevertheless, not. homeless people on the street, you know, I know people have done that. And they said, well, don't want food, want the money. That You know, you've got to judge up in your mind whether oh, yeah. they are homeless people on the street who are homeless people on the street or whether they've been put there by someone else. Because there are gangs that go around, you know. There are gangs that oh, yeah. go around and they position people on the... There is, they collect all the money, then they go and collect the money. I mean, how do you, it's right. difficult to tell sometimes. Very difficult. That's why if they don't give money, you know, give food. And if they don't want food, then they obviously don't need help. A nice Big Mac with the special tangy sauce. That's what they want. Yep, exactly. <laughs> all right, Adam. Thanks ever so much for calling in and, and letting us know all things right, are working. Things seem to be working now because uh, someone liked it and I've managed to get the uh, oh, uh, the messages coming back there, I'm pleased to say. So thank you very much. All right, Adam, have a lovely day, sir. Happy Chris. Bye-bye. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye now. There we are, Adam the plumber calling in there. Uh, he's uh, an excellent plumber, incidentally. If you ever want a plumber, that's the man you want there. He won't rip you off, I promise you. You don't even charge a call-out fee. I don't <laughs> he always owes money, or not not to people, but he's got a few debts and things. You won't mind me telling you this. Got a few debts here and there because he don't charge enough for his work. <laughs> don't take the mick out of him, though. Don't take the mick. All right, some more of your messages there. Uh, Ray Reynolds is testing. Thank you, Ray, for testing that. So we've been talking about that there. Uh, going back to last night, anyway, um, I was talking to you about uh, the quiz last night, an excellent quiz last night. Two hours to get to work, unfortunately. Uh, nice amount of people. We had seven teams there last night. But here's the thing. Ray Reynolds and his team won again. So that's about three or four times now they won. Congratulations, Ray. Congratulations winning on that one. They won again. But Ray Reynolds is sitting there. Ever so, It was a bit quiet last night. Weren't saying much there last night. Ray Reynolds is sitting there. Look at this. Now, I want to show you this. 
It's a little bit blurred, that picture, which is disappointing because that's off the new iPhone 8. <laughs> but can you see that? <clears throat> can you see what Ray Reynolds has got there? You can't, actually, can you? It, it, it's too blurred. That is a gold Blue Peter badge. Ray Reynolds has got a gold Blue Peter badge. I mean, I've only got a blue one. I want to know how Ray Reynolds got a gold blue Peter badge. He must have slept with someone for that, mustn't he? Eh? I reckon so. <laughs> All right, let's go to the phones. Ashley's there. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, love. How are you? Oh, you're not a well little boy, are you? Do you want cuddles? Oh, God, I feel like shit. Oh, well, sorry, I feel like rubbish. That's OK, you let it slip out. I don't mind words that slip out now and again and then people realise and then it doesn't happen again. It's if people were to ring up and say, oof, 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 you know, just stupid idiots. Stupid idiots. Ah, oh, Paul needs a plumber, but he's in Newcastle. Might have to charge you a little bit more for that, Paul. Just a little touch. <laughs> you have to go through that tunnel to get to Newcastle, don't you? Do you go to Newcastle at all, Ashley? No, love. Now, what's wrong with poor little Ashley today? Oh, are you all on your own, Ashley? Uh, is someone look? Is mummy look? Is mummy look? I'm banged up and I've got high temperature and flu and oh. Oh dear. Well, hang on a minute. You were in the pub on Monday. You better not give that to me. Oh, don't worry, love. Don't worry. I'm uh, trying not to. You need a mask on. <laughs> yeah. N not just. Um, not just. Not just. You know the paper masks. You know the paper masks. You often see the. I think the people in. I think it's Thailand. Okay. Thailand or Japan, one of those. And you often see them in airports. And they've all got these paper masks on, you know. Something like you. You need to have one of those things. You know, like they used to go down, the old things, they used to go down in the sea. Great big round things on their head, completely sealed off so, you, you're, so that your viruses can't get out of your mouth into mine. <laughs> That's what you need on, something like that. Complete, yeah. a sealed unit. <laughs> I, bl I blame my partner, love. That's what I do. Never mind. I call, Never I call mind. It from him. Never mind. What are you calling in for, my friend? Um, just a quick one. Um, obviously, from the previous caller, I agree. I agree with you and what he's saying about um, you know where people post things, and you know if you, uh, I agree. Cause like, when I read it, I just I bypass it all because it's not supporting them. It's it's as you say, it's building someone's ego up. Ego yeah. up. So, yeah. you know, if I want to do something or if I want to help a charity or something like that, I'll go, I'll go and physically donate um, some money or do some charity work myself. Right. Have you done much charity work, Ashley? Is that, some, is that a regular thing or just now and again? It's now and again. Like, I might do, like, the odd occasional day here and there or whatever. Or I've done, like, I've worked in a charity shop oh, before right. I've done that. Um so, yeah, I, I sort of, I help out um, yeah. every now and then. And what do you, um, what, what, what's the charity shop? Is it like a heart thing or something like that, is it? Uh, yeah, Heart Foundation or Oxfam or, um, you know, uh, the other one which I've donated before is Cancer Research. Yeah. I've, don I've donated money to them before. Have you got a regular thing or just just now and again? Oh, just now and it's it's now and again. Not oh, it's not. Admittedly, I should really do it regularly. Admittedly, but no, you um, should you sh not. No, you shouldn't. You should do it when when whenever you think. You do it whenever you think. Don't apologise. You know any. You know you put a penny in. It's a penny. You know. Don't apologise. Oh, oh yeah, I put I put to cancer research. I used to donate. I think it was ten, ten pounds a month. Yes. I used to donate to cancer research, and okay. funny enough, I got a leaflet through the door the other week about it, mm. um, saying oh how much you know they appreciate me donating and things like that, and you know uh, it's like, kind of like a uh, thank you um, sort of note, if you know what I mean. That's all right, isn't it? Now, tell me, does it bother you the amount of um, money that some of the people in charge of the charities get? Uh, yeah, because I I feel some and as the previous caller did, I, I feel that I think some of them. Do I dare say it or do I dare not say it? I feel that. Do you know what I mean? I feel that they sort of like. They should be doing it for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, me too, me too. There are charities. 
uh, that promise you that every penny that you give goes to the concern and they don't have like a management uh, uh, structure or things like that. There's certainly, you know, I got to go to the church and often the priest up there says, oh, there's a second collection today. It's for, uh, for example, Cathod, which is a Catholic mm. charity thing. OK, and they, they guarantee that every penny you give, say, I don't know, it's to, uh, oh, of course, I don't know. Say it's to building a school in Africa or something like that. You know, every penny that you give will buy a little bit of that school. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah There's yeah. no management. No one's getting a wage or anything like that. And that, to me, is how a charity should be. Now, the charities uh, on the television, um, which we've often seen, they get them on to interview when they, they come out with the lists of wages. And the charities would argue that they need someone running the charity who knows what they're doing. And to get that sort of person, they have to pay good money. Uh, so I don't know what you think about that. Um, I, well, I agree oh. with what you're saying in a way, love. I do, you know. I, I um, would think, I would think that if they asked around, someone would come forward and would do the job for nothing. I really do think that. Now, I understand that there are certain outgoings that they would have. For example, when they're trying to get the money in, I suppose they have to send out letters to people or put the occasional advert on the telly. But sometimes there's so many of them. And you think, oh, here we go again. And you just switch it over. The same as a normal advert or, or a television programme that you're trying to watch that you're bored with. Mm. I mean, have you? this is the thing, the other thing. Like, they, Obviously, where to get the money to come in, as you were saying, like to advertise, we, years and years ago when I was at school, we did, um, in maths, we did a calculation uh, about advertisement, how much it costs. Right. And it's, at, when I was at school, it's absolutely flabbergasting. And, oh, and yes. just for one advert, for like maybe one or two minutes, it's like... Oh, it's tens of thousands of pounds. Oh, yeah. That's right. Especially, I mean, it used to be, I don't know if it's the same now, because ITV don't have as many viewers as they used to have, uh, but they're the ones that have lost out big time, really, to the to the multi-channels, ITV. But um, mm. depending on the programme would depend on how much the advertiser would pay. And the most expensive one, I believe, was Coronation Street. If you wanted to go in the middle of Coronation Street, it I mean, it was tens of thousands of pounds for a 20-second advert. Tens oh. of thousands. You know, if I sold my house, I'd probably get one 30-second advert on ITV. That's how much it is. <laughs> really? I wonder if we can find that out, actually. I could I have a quick look at that. ITV advertising rates or something like that. But it you is, Tim. And, of course, you're mentioning in that because the char presumably the charities pay that, do they? I don't know. I, I don't know either. I don't know. I mean... It, it makes you wonder, though, because you think you're paying all this money to the charities, uh, to obviously to help the people, you know, like the previous call, like, um, you know, with soldiers that are trying to find homes that are obviously out on the streets and things like And when they're advertising, they think, well, how are they funding that? Oh, Unless well, I've, we're sort of yeah, paying I mean, for it. I don't, I don't know if the charities... I mean... I, I don't know how it works. Do the charities get some sort of discount if they're putting an ad on there? On the other hand, ITV is a business and it has to make money. Um, it, it would go like... I, I, I haven't done any recently, actually. I, I don't get asked anymore. On the other hand, I'm always busy, so I probably couldn't do it. But I used to do the occasional charity night where I'd go and do my DJ in, you know, for nothing. Um... Whether or not the, the, the ITV, whether they give them a discount, I don't know. But I've just found this on the internet here. It says, uh, and this was dated the 22nd of February. I'm surprised at this. A 30-second ad during ITV's breakfast schedule between the likes of Good Morning or Lorraine, it says here, and I don't know if this is true, costs between three and £4,000. What? Now, that's a lot less than I thought it would be. For a daytime slot... Ads of the same length come in at three and a half to four thousand pounds, four and a half thousand mm. pounds, while at peak rate alternative can cost anything from ten to thirty thousand pounds. Gosh, that's, 
That's crazy. Ten to thirty thousand pounds. Hang on, ITV media rates. This is interesting, isn't it? ITV TV advertising has never been so accessible or affordable. With micro region targeting, what the I don't know what that is. We can work with you to build the perfect campaign for your business needs and goals. Costs can vary for an ad on the telly for as little as two thousand pounds. Up to more than a million pounds, depending on how much noise you need to make. Go! I can advertise my show! I could save up two grand and put a 30 second ad on the telly. Hello, join me, Chris Reardon. <laughs> I think that's the way that I've got to do that. That's tax deductible. That, that would be tax deductible. That would be tax deductible. I could write that off against tax. Oh, sorry, am I making you more ill? Ah! <laughs> No, sorry. I'm turning. I'm turning the phone away from my. Um, Please do, because I can see germs coming out of my loudspeakers down here, dear. Well, well, well. Two grand. You might see my face popping up on ITV soon. <laughs> oh, that'll be that'll be uh, interesting, love. <laughs> right. Well, thanks in for nice calling way, in, obviously. Ashley. <laughs> All right. All right, in love. Well, um, I probably won't see it if this cold's still not gone. Yeah, you tomorrow, stay in and won't. get well soon, all right? Thanks for calling, Ash. Bye-bye now. Che cheers, Chris. There Bye. we are. Lovely to hear Ashley calling in on the show this morning, boys and girls. 0208143477 is my local London number. What's the time? Oh, 11. Is it 11 o'clock already? I don't know where the time goes when we're chatting together. I really don't. It just disappears so quickly. It really does. Okie doke. Um... Couple of stories for you uh, this morning. The Christmas ads. The Christmas ads are now on the television, boys and girls. They have started. There's a really, really nice one this morning uh, that's out now. And that's the Audi one. OK, the Audi Christmas. Um, the Audi Christmas advert is now on the telly and it involves a little carrot and it's it's absolutely delightful. So keep an eye out for the Audi Christmas advert. Good morning, Luke. How are you, sir? I've watched the Audi Christmas advert. It's brilliant. It is good, isn't it? With a little carrot. I love it. Has it been on the telly yet? Yeah, it has been. Um, they usually do it every single ad break. Oh, right. OK, I haven't seen it on the television yet. I saw it advertised on... Um... On the uh, oh, what do you call it? On the um, on the YouTube. So I watched it on that last night, and I thought it was really good. Austin wants to know: Is this the Pearl Channel? I don't know what the Pearl Channel is. What's the Pearl Channel? Have you heard of that? Not, Paul, Paul I'm suggests. I'm not sure what the Pearl Channel is. <laughs> Paul uh, up in Newcastle suggests I sell the car and get an ad on the telly. <laughs> 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 How are you, sir? What are you calling in for, Luke? Um, I'm just calling in about the pressure of Christmas and I, I um, feel pressurised already because um, there's obviously all the adverts on already and I'm worried about what to get people when I've, I'm going to be spending enough uh, it's just uh, really just commercialised like you were saying earlier did you whistle then? No, it was uh, it was my phone. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, I thought I thought I could hear. I thought someone was whistling in my own house. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was just my message alert. Um, okay. Going so, off. Ha I mean, have you got to buy Christmas presents for many people, um, uh, Luke? Not, not that many, but um, see, my sister and my brother-in-law have quite a good jobs, so they spend a lot on Christmas presents. Right. And I feel I feel pressurised to get them uh, this, um, spend the same amount on them. Well, you shouldn't do. It's, it's not about the amount spent. To be fair, you're not, you're, you know, you're not the only one who thinks like this. Um, you don't need to spend loads of money. It's the thought. It's the thought. It's too many people worried about how much they're spending on Christmas presents just because you've spent, I don't know, £500 on, on a cup doesn't mean that 
that's any better as a present, not as a value, not as a value, as a present, as, as someone's bought, you know, a £2.50 cup. Now, now let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Luke. What would you rather have here, okay? A £500 cup as bought from a shop with the name Wedgwood at the bottom or a £2 cup hand-painted by a child. What would you rather have? The two-pound cup. There you go. By From a, a member of the family. Um, I know you're disabled, aren't you? Can you make yeah. anything? Um, not um, very easily because my hands don't work too okay. brilliantly. But I can um, uh, do like little video. Um, Mate, All right, here's, here's a suggestion. Here's a suggestion for you. So, for your sister, perhaps you could get yeah. hold of like a, a, a wicker basket or maybe a nice box and fill it with straw and fruit, nicely arranged. That's a good idea. Maybe uh, watch, really out, good watch idea. out for the fruit. Because you can't buy it too early in advance, all right? You don't want to be opening the box and it's all gone mouldy. <laughs> uh, but, but jars, jars of honey, not not honey. Try and seek out perhaps a honey that you can't find in your normal shop. You know, I don't know what it's like. Perhaps there's a farm shop near you or something like that. So, and, and kind of arrange it. Do you have a helper come in? <clears throat> yeah. Right, there you go. There's your help. So perhaps arrange it in the box or something like that. Um, perhaps you think of, you know, things that your sister would like. You did say your sister, didn't you? Or was it your brother? Yeah. Things that your sister yeah, would my like. Sister. I don't know what that would be. Perhaps, a, a, a... how old is she? she old? No, she's uh, only 18 months. Um... Oh, she's 18 months old. And there's only 18 months between us. Oh, so how old so, is she? So she's like uh, 34 and I'm 33. 34. And you mean to tell me she wouldn't understand the fact that you haven't bought a, a present as expensive as hers? Of course she understands that. Of course she understands yeah, that. I, I'm sure she does. It. It's just the pressure of everything. Well, don't the take it out. Don't, don't, don't be... The don't be Everything. sucked. Don't be sucked in by the television. Don't be sucked in by the television presents that tell you you've got to spend five hundred pounds on a blooming uh, computer game or something like. It's absolutely ridiculous what's going on on that telly. Absolutely ridiculous. Don't take any notice of that. You go and buy what you can afford, and do not overstretch yourself. I hear I hear stories of people that that have um, borrowed money. Borrowed money to um, uh, to have Christmas or for holidays or things like that. And it's ridiculous. Don't. You, you just buy within your means. And if that means you're going to have three oranges in a box, then so be it. That's what you can afford. Do not borrow money and don't overstretch yourself. That's my advice to you, my friend. And you won't be for any little of by your sister or anyone else. They know your situation. You do not have to keep up with everyone else. It's not the value of the gift. It's the thought that counts. You're absolutely right. All You're right. absolutely right. And I think the, the problem is that, like we keep saying, it's just TV pressure all the while. And then one made in it in your face all the time. That is exactly what it is, mate. Ignore it. Just to, if and if you can't, if if it comes on, flick it over for two minutes. Two minutes later, it'll be off, and the next program will be on. Yeah. All right, Luke. You have a lovely day, and thanks for calling in, sir. I will do, and you too. Speak again Bye. soon. Bye bye now, Luke. There in Peterborough, talking about his um his uh, Christmas things. You know, you, you you mustn't overstretch yourself. It's ridiculous. Don't be sucked in by the... OK, if you've got 10000 to spend on presents, spend it. If you've got £10 to spend on presents, spend the £10. Doesn't matter. And if the person at the other end doesn't appreciate whatever you've got them, 
then they weren't worth buying a present for and you don't do it again next year. There's too many people out there are, are worried about, oh, 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 oh well, I was going to get him that, but I don't think it's expensive enough. How ridiculous is that? It's ridiculous. And watch out for the ones who try and get stuff out of you. You know, they shouldn't be getting anything at all. You know, I want, I want, I want. I found it more difficult, actually, with my nieces and nephews now um, because I just don't know what they want. And uh, indeed, I have to I speak to my sister. Can you see what so and so wants? And I've got three nieces and nephews and six great nieces and nephews now. And no one ever asks for anything. They're, they're a great family. No one takes the mick, you know, no one asks for anything big. And it actually makes you want to get them something big because the fact that they don't ask for it. You know, my nephew asked for a, a, a tracksuit, which he sent a link for, for on eBay. I'm very lucky to have a family like that. I really am. I really am. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what, what is, I don't know what the Pearl Channel is. What is the Pearl Channel? I'm dying to know what the Pearl Channel is. We don't know what that is. <laughs> Wendy's agreeing with that. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Terry says, I would love a note in a card for Christmas saying I've donated the money I was going to spend on a gift to a homeless charity. Or I've bought a homeless person a warm coat or a meal or something. I don't need or want anything, but these people have nothing. That would make Christmas for me. That That's a lovely thing to say, isn't it? That's a lovely thing to say. I, I'm sure that you can buy probably certificates from various charities saying, here's my gift to you. I've donated five pounds to the, uh, to the to the Homes for Heroes charity or something like that. I'm sure there's probably certificates you can buy like that, all right? Wendy says, I'm sure Luke's sister would treasure anything he gave her, no matter the value in monetary terms. It's the value of the thought that counts. It, it absolutely is. I mean, it really is. That's how it works. Okay. All right, uh, just going back to the Christmas ads and then we're going to wrap up today, boys and girls. Already available online now is the Audi Christmas ad, which is charming, absolutely charming. It's about a carrot and it meets another carrot and they get together. It's just cute, cute, cute. Uh, the John Lewis one is not out yet. However, there's a story in this morning's Daily Mirror. Uh, which says the star of the John Lewis Christmas advert has been revealed ahead of its premiere after customers spotted a toy version of the monster under the bed in stores. The Retail Giants 2017 ad, which I love the John Lewis Christmas ads. They really are a masterpiece. It's only been tested so far before the full length release, which is believed to be happening this Friday. John Lewis had shared only a glimpse of the ad with a mysterious pair of eyes, as seen on an unofficial Twitter account alongside the hashtag under the bed at the eyes emoji. However, a cuddly toy version of the monster is already available to purchase, ruining the surprise for millions of excited customers. Shoppers have been sharing snaps on social media of what they believe to be the creature from the advert. The fluffy grey creature has the same large goggly eyes from the advert, pointed ears, a large nose, and intriguingly, just one sock. Perhaps they're trying to sell socks, are they? Mirror Online has contacted representatives of John Lewis for comment. It has become tradition for John Lewis to sell plush toys of the characters from its famous adverts, with Buster the Dog and the Bear and the Hare from previous years available um, in the store. So we're looking forward to the uh, John Lewis advert coming out soon. The Audi one's out. The Marks and Spencers one is also out right now, boys and girls. OK, uh, if you want to have a look at that, I think that's on YouTube. I think it's been on the television as well. So well worth having a look at that. OK, uh, I'll do today's birthdays now, boys and girls. It's birthday time here on United Kingdom Talk. Happy birthday to 10 people today. First of all, Adrian Alkins Santos, who I think is a DJ as well. Good morning, Adrian. Happy birthday to you, sir, on this Thursday, the 9th of November 2017. Uh, our good friend Steve Bacon, who I haven't seen for a couple of years, 66 years old today. He's uh, a karaoke king, aren't you, Steve? Pop along. You'd like the Camden Ice, Steve. Sunday nights, 8 till 10.45, that one. 
Camden Eye in Camden Town for you. Uh, Shirley Poison. Happy birthday to Shirley Poison. Lucky Luke. 35 years old today. Happy birthday, Lucky. Robert Dagg. Greetings, Robert. Happy birthday. Uh, karaoke host extraordinaire, Kevin Walsh. Now, Kevin's been hosting karaoke for much longer than I have. Uh, very successfully in various parts of uh, London. He holds down residences for years. I mean years and years and years, which means he's very good at it. Happy birthday to you, Kevin, today. Uh, I don't think you're 52. That's what it says there. Um, I thought you were sort of late 40s or mid 40s even. But happy birthday to Kevin Walsh, 52 years old today. Uh, what is it, Thursday today? Where is he today? I think he's hosting karaoke tonight at Halfway to Heaven. OK, that's on Thursday nights. Jeff Ball, happy birthday to Jeff Ball. Julia White. I did a little party for her a few years ago. Happy birthday, Julia. She used to come in into long to uh, Blucius in Hammersmith. Uh, William Luke Steele. He's the baby today. Only 26 little years old, aren't you, Luke? Happy birthday, Luke. And Liz Hookway. Happy birthday this morning to Liz. Here comes the song. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthday on this Thursday. Any late messages coming in? I shall have a quick look before we disappear today. Disappear and uh, I'm off to the swimming pool. I've got to go into town, got a little bit of shopping to do. I need some onions. I'm completely out of the onions, and tonight I want to make my spaghetti arabata sauce bef before I record uh, uh, Monday's music and chat show. Thank you very much for watching the show. Uh, thank you also to those of you that uh, share the programme on your walls. That's always appreciated. Have a lovely, lovely Thursday, and I'll see you again very soon. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>